Waiting to buy a home? The Churchill Mortgage Team says now is a great time to buy. Waiting could be a costly mistake because when rates drop, new home buyers will flood the market, driving up home prices. Go to churchillmortgage.com for your free analysis and see how home values can outpace rates to help you build wealth over time faster. This is a paid advertisement. NMLS ID 1591. NMLSconsumeraccess.org. Equal housing lender. 1749 Mallory Lane, Suite 100, Brentwood, Tennessee. 37027. Capture life's moments like never before with Rockbrook Camera, Nebraska and Western Iowa's premier camera store since 1975. Rockbrook Camera is not just about selling you a camera. It's about helping you become a real photographer, recording your life and sharing it with others. Today's cameras are faster, easier to use, capable of shooting stunning video, and with film photography making a comeback, there's never been a better time to dive into the world of photography. Rockbrook Camera goes as fast or as slow as you want to go. You can try before you buy with camera rentals or give that older generation camera in the used department a whole new journey. Find Rockbrook Camera, one block south of 168th and West Center in Omaha, 70th and Pioneers in Lincoln, and at rockbrookcamera.com. That's rockbrookcamera.com. Discover or rediscover your love of photography today at Rockbrook Camera. Great photography begins here. Amen. Amen. Revelation chapter number 18 tonight. Revelation chapter number 18. <clears throat> Last week we dealt with um, Babylon. We dealt with the great Babylonian city. We have dealt with the reasons for the fall of Babylon. Tonight I want to pick up in verse number 9 and I want to deal with the reactions to the fall of Babylon. And um, there are several reactions here tonight. There are two. They're opposite one from another. There are those who are grieved by the fall of Babylon. And then there are those that are gladdened or happy about the fall of Babylon. And uh, tonight I want to deal with those that are grieved by the fall of Babylon. So, um, so tonight as we get there, Revelation chapter number 18 and verse number 9. When you find your place there, say amen. All right. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication, we dealt with that last, not, last week about them selling their countries and themselves out to the city of Babylon, all right? And live deliciously with her, shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Verse number 10, the Bible says, Standing afar off for the fear of the torment, saying, Alas, at last, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour thy judgment has come. Tonight when we look at these people, the kings are those who have allied with the beast. These are people that have sold themselves to the great city of Babylon, who would think the Babylon is the answer. And these are the ones who have helped sponsor the founding and the building of the city, rebuilding of the city. And those who influence and power was no small measure centered in the city. They stand afar off watching afraid to come near, wringing their hands over their losses and recognizing that how godless and blasphemous they are. And when we look at this tonight, there are a lot of people who think they are very powerful today, but when they stand before a thrice and holy God, how much power do they really have? None, right? The Bible says God raises up kings and God sets down kings. In this day, in this day that we're talking about here in Revelation 18, 
He has raised up kings to rebuild the city, and now he is showing them that without him they are nothing, and without, and without him and his judgment, or with his judgment, they cannot stop him that he is the king of kings. All right? Um, that Babylon's fall is a visitation of judgment. The kings are dependent on Babylon for their power. They would rather put their faith in a city than their faith in God. You know, that's sad tonight. We got people tonight that'll put their faith in a lot of things, but they've not put their faith in God. They'll put their faith in money. They'll put their faith in a church. They'll put their faith in a man. They'll put their faith in the government, but they will not put their faith in God. Man will pass away, money will pass away, the church eventually will be caught up in the rapture and pass away, and those who have not gave their faith in God and had their faith in God, they will be left behind. Yet with all their armies and all their resources of science and technology, they are impotent to lift a finger to save their city. God didn't stop them from building Babylon, but they cannot stop God from taking it away from them either. So moving on tonight. So we see tonight those who are upset. Who are the ones that are upset tonight? Well, there's several. Are y'all ready for this? Let's go to verse number 11 tonight. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. The merchandise of gold, silver, and precious stones, and of pearls, and the fine linen, and purple, and silk, and scarlet, and thin wood, and all manner of vessels of ivory, and all manner of vessels of precious wood, and of brass, and iron, and marble. Moving on to verse number uh, 13. And cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, in other words, cattle, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves. Notice this, they're going to go back to slavery. And slaves, and this is the scary part. And what's that last part? And souls of men. Why would they be, what are they selling the souls of men for? For worldly gain. There are many people tonight that have proclaimed, I've sold my soul to the devil. I've sold my soul to this world to be popular, to be famous, to be rich, to have all of the money in the world, but they don't have God. Moving on here tonight. And, uh, and the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee. All things which are dainty and goodly, are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen, and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught. When we see this tonight, we see that there is a vivid picture of a great commercial city trafficking in every luxury the heart could desire. That is this world's great vanity fair. It offers articles of adornment and display of beautiful things to grace the mansions of the world's millionaires. It deals in exotic spices, perfumes, and delicacies for the table in provisions for banquets in slaves and souls of men. And Babylon imported all these things. They flowed into her new and magnificent harbor from the seaports of the world. The business of the earth harness their industries, their export trade, their entire commercial enterprise for Babylon and the wealth of the world pass through her clearinghouse. Babylon's demand for this world's goods was 
irresistible. It clamored for more and more. But now nothing is left in the city. Her warehouses have burned up. The markets and the shopping centers are reduced to smoldering rubble. Her multimillionaires are dead in one hour. So great riches are brought to nothing. And the merchants standing out of reach Babylon, choking the highways that lead into the city, watch with horror as their investments, their inventories, and their fortunes go up in smoke. You know something that surprises me about these verses of Scripture? We've seen the kings that are upset, right? And now we see the merchants that are upset, or the monarchs as the kings. They have not done anything to try to save the city. What does the Bible say? Where are they standing? Afar off. Think about that tonight. They have realized that they have met their maker. They have realized that this is far out of their control. I can't help but think, that these kings who have put people to death, these merchants who seized those that were saved during the tribulation period that didn't take the mark of the beast, who when they would walk by, they would make fun of, and they said, God will take care of us. And when they step back and see Babylon up in smoke, what happens? They realize the God that these people were talking about. They realized that the mark did not help them one bit. They realized that the beast, the devil, has lied to them and told them many lies. The Bible says that the devil is the father of what? Of lies, right? The devil will paint a pretty picture. No doubt he has told these kings and these people and the kings and the merchants, look at all that I have given you. And God said, because you rejected me, look at what all you have lost. It's a sad state of affairs that they're in. Everybody good on these two so far? We're all good. Say amen. amen. All right. Not only do I see the monarchs, not only do I see the merchants. Thirdly tonight, I see the mariners. Preacher, what do you mean here, the mariners? Go with me to verse number uh, 17. The Bible says, And every shipmaster and all the company in ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea, where were they? Stood afar off. Again, they're not trying to save what is burning. Do you know what that tells me tonight? That they did not care about Babylon. All they cared was about themselves. They only cared about their power. They only cared about their prestige. And here, these ones that are in the ship, all they care about is how are we going to survive. All right, moving on. And cried when they saw the smoke of her burning saying, what city is like unto this great city? Where are we going to go now? Where's the next place to go? I watched The Deadliest Catch. I love that show. And when they are crab, when they're fishing for crab, if fish aren't, if the crabs, not fish, if the crab are not doing good, you know what they do? They move to another place. Here, the merchants are gone, the monarchs are gone, and now the mariners are saying, okay, what's the next city we can go to so that we can make our profits? There's none. It's a sad state of affairs that they're in. And they cast the dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing. Cry, cry. There's a big difference in all of these three things of crying here. All right? Verse number 19, and their wheat, they cried. Now, crying is when we have tears streaming down our face, right? Weeping is when we are crying how? Uncontrollably. 
There's nothing we can do to stop it. But they go a step further. They are wailing. Wailing is when somebody is crying and screaming at the same time in pure panic on what am I going to do. Wherein were made, excuse me, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein we were made, what? Rich. All that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour she is made desolate. When we think about this today, as I put in my notes, could you imagine if our seaports of the world were burned up? New York, London, Hong Kong, and Tokyo was gone. Where would all of our stuff come from? Have you thought about that today? What if all of our tractor and trailers that haul all of our merchandise to and from stores said, we're done, we're not going to do it anymore? What would happen? But when we think about this, Babylon is going to be the monster of them all. They're going to depend on this. The sea lanes of the world will now converge as one giant seaport. In, in Babylon's day, they will converge upon her, but now Babylon is gone and the world's trade is in ruins. The, ship in the, per, the ships in the Persian Gulf will stand hastily back out to sea. Giant convoys of ships displaying their flags of hundreds of nations Ride at anchor far from the writhing center of the fiery maelstrom of doom. Telescopes are fixed to every eye as astonished and frightened seamen watch in horror of the last agony of Avalon. Ruined ship owners wonder what can be salvaged from the vessels that will choke the harbors of the world now that Babylon at whose beck and call so many merchant fleets were launched, is gone forevermore. That's one reason you never put all your eggs in one basket. You never know when that basket's going to get a hole in it. Am I right? Moving on tonight. Then in verse number 20, everybody good on this? Then at verse number 20 tonight, there are those that were sad or grieved, but verse number 20 tonight, there are those who are gladdened by the fall of Babylon. The Bible says the angel, in verse number 20, Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on where? Her. When we think about this, we think about those who are Gladdened by the fall, there are those who rejoice in heaven. It is a matter of great interest to those who observe that heaven is still interested in earth. When we think about the prophets who are gladdened by this fall, you can't help but think about Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, and Isaiah who have waited so long for the fulfillment of thy words. I'll give you some Smithology on this. Y'all ready? I believe that before the fall of Babylon takes place, God will call Ezekiel, Daniel, Jeremiah, and Isaiah and say, Come here. I want you to look over the banisters of heaven at what I'm getting ready to do. Those promises that I have given you, I want you to see those fulfilled. Those things that you pin down, in the scrolls and passed on to generation after generation. I want to show you that my word will not return void. And I want to show you at what I'm getting ready to do. I think about the apostles. The apostles are those who are those disciples who sing Christ, right? No doubt. Not all of it's recorded in the New Testament, and I understand that. No doubt there was some conversations about what God was going to do in the end times. 
He may call those apostles over and say, hey, come here, remember those conversations that we had amongst ourselves, and I told you that one day I would return again, and when I came back again, I would call my people out, and after I called my people out, this great city Babylon would be rebuilt. And after it was rebuilt, I would destroy it. Y'all remember that conversation? Yes, sir, we do. Watch at what is getting ready to be done. I believe that. Y'all like that side. Y'all like that part, don't you? I take it a step further. I believe that those who have, and there's no Bible to back this up, so take it or leave it. It's fine. But I believe that those who have prayed for sinners throughout the years that have passed on, God, right before he says, hey, come here. That person you prayed for is getting ready to get saved. Watch this. Watch your prayer be answered. Why not? Right? All of heaven's going to rejoice over that one sinner repenting. So why not let them be firsthand to see it? Moving on. <clears throat> From one end of heaven to the other, the tidings are born. Babylon is fallen. The flags are run up and... Adorn the turrets and the towers along the walls of Jasper, the echoes of everlasting hills awake. And sound back the news, Babylon is fallen. And they will rejoice over her. Let's go on to verse number 21 tonight. Y'all good with that? All right, verse number 21. Not only are we going to see the reaction, not only did we see the reason... And I won't get through all of this tonight, but we'll probably finish up chapter number 18. I want us to look tonight at the results. We may get finished all of this. The results of Babylon falling. The results are far-reaching both in heaven and on earth. On earth, damage is described. Notice this. After God comes back, that earth is just, I mean, literally, it's going to be hell on earth. And that there's damage everywhere, Right? But in heaven, delight is described. So first of all, let's look at the damage on earth. I want us to look first of all that there's a holocaust on earth. Preacher, what do you mean? Go with me tonight to verse number 21. The Bible says, And a mighty angel took up a stone, great like a millstone, Notice this, Jesus likened those who offended children, right? That it'd be better for them to have a millstone put around their neck than to hurt a child. Here it is, a millstone. And cast it in the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. When I think about that, the other night I was watching a... Um, I was watching a, was it a, it wasn't a movie. It was like a show about, um, what was it? About? It was about, I can't remember. But anyway, that man told this other man, he said, listen, you're going to do as I say, or you're going to find yourself at the bottom of the ocean wearing a pair of cement slippers. And I was like, man, why would he throw him in the bottom? Of, why would he throw him in the ocean with cement slippers? You don't want him to be seen anymore, Right? Now, my luck, I would do it and be a defective bag of cement, and he'd float right to the top. And he'd find my DNA all over him. That'd be my luck. But when we see this tonight, the Bible says that God's going to put a millstone that hurling into the sea of a great millstone vividly symbolizes the violence of Babylon's overthrow. When we see this tonight, it's the violence of Babylon's fall, the violent upheaval of the water as the mighty weight makes impact and sinks beneath the, per beneath the surface. When you think about that tonight, you ever threw a big rock into a pond? What happens? It creates a violent ripple, right? So imagine God taking a millstone. Now, a millstone's pretty good size. And liking it to Babylon and throwing it in the middle of an ocean. That make a pretty violent what that make a pretty violent splash, would it not? Moving on. The outrushing circles of disturbance, the closing in of the sea, the eternal disappearance of the stall of the stone. Suddenness, violence, 
and completeness are all portrayed. One moment, prosperous Babylon stands as a queen of the city, cities in communication with the rest of the world and is sought out by all nations. The next moment, she is gone, forever gone. The violence, God said, I'm done. You're gone. Never to be heard of again. I took you down one time and I allowed you to come back, but this time there is no coming back. Moving on tonight, not only do I see the violence of the fall, but I see the vastness of the fall. The vastness of the fall. Preacher, what do you see in the vastness of the fall? Go with me to verse number 22. And the voice of the harpers and musicians and of pipers and of trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of the millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. The doom will be complete. The curtain rings down forever on this city of sin. The language used here is similar of that legal document as were God covering the pronouncement from every possible anger to leave no loophole that Babylon will never rise again. Take it as a judge tonight who sentences a murderer to life in prison without parole. Once that gavel slams, there is no hope for that murderer to ever see the light of day. God at this point said everything that Babylon represents is gone. Never to be heard anymore. Lastly tonight, we'll stop here. I want us to look at the, validi- the validation of Babylon's fall. The validation of Babylon's fall. <clears throat> what do you see here tonight? Go with me to verse number 23. And the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom. Ooh, hey, can I back up right here for just a second? And the voice of the bridegroom. And of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. Now, if we go back to Matthew's gospel, chapter number, oh, my mind is drew a blank. The ten virgins. They had oil in their lamps. Who were they waiting on? Right, the bridegroom. All right, the bridegroom represents who? Jesus, right? Christ. Who does the bride represent? The church. God is saying, you will hear no more from me. You will hear no more from the church. For thy merchants were great men of the earth. For by their sorceries were all nations deceived. God says it's over. There's no hope. Moving on, 24. The Bible says... And in her was found the blood of prophets. Now this is something that we have to go back and go back and look at. We say the days of prophets are over, right? But we know that Daniel died. Sometime along, Jeremiah and all of those men died, right? And I haven't studied, I'll be honest, I haven't studied where they died and how they died. And that's something that I probably need to do. Did Babylon help put them to death? That's something that we need to study. But also, they're going to, there has to be prophets in this last day to tell of what is coming to Babylon. Do y'all not agree? They are prophesying... What is going to happen? God says, we're going to take you out. God says, y'all are going to fall. God says, this is what's going to take place. So they kill them. And of the saints. And of all that were slain upon the earth. Notice this. God did it just hold verse number 24. The prophet, the blood of the prophets. 
God didn't hold just the blood of the saints, but God also held them accountable for the blood of all of the people that were deceived by them. So we see their fall. We see they fell because of their pride, their presumption, and how they have perverted themselves to make them the final depository of all the sins of the world. She was delib- Babylon was deliberately built to organize control and to extend the beast policy of godlessness, iniquity, oppression, and persecution. And her fall is just. Her fall isn't only just, but her fall is final. And tonight as we close out on that, we see that how Babylon is fallen. Next week we'll pick up in chapter number 19. That's a good stopping point because we got choir practice tonight. Uh, we'll pick up in chapter number 19 next week. And we'll pick up on the, on the rejoicing of the results. All right. Any questions? Any comments? Any concerns tonight? Everybody good? All right. We'll dismiss in prayer. Brother Jim Gills, you'll close us out tonight. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to Chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.